Phnom Bakhang Temple or the Mountain Temple of Bakhang is around 1.3 kilometers north of the Angkor Wat Temple western entrance. It is highly adored by many visitors and as they reach the temple, there are several exciting agendas awaiting beside admiring the beauty of the ancient mountain temple alone. Tourists can take their leisure time to do several popular activities such as sightseeing the view of the nutritious Cambodian flatland and other temples from the mountain top, as well as watching the splendid orange bright sun as it metaphorically slips beneath the earth's curvature. Moreover, Mount Bakhang itself is a remarkable place for athletics to enjoy mountain hikes, especially in the early morning when the air is calmed and the temperature is chilled. What used to be an extremely inclining and steep angle entrance at the front of the temple has now become the past. Alternatively, visitors can now use the spiraling pathway, which is gently inclined from the front of the mountain up until almost the very top. On the other hand, Bakhang Mountain is just the perfect spot for photographers. There are wooden lounges, which extend outward like balconies for tourists or photographers to rest, to breathe, to sip some water or juice, to appreciate or to take photos of the stunning view of the Angkor Wat Temple floating amid the thick forest. From some particular points, people can capture the astonishing sundown or post-rain golden light that overlies the Angkor Wat Temple. Historically, this Hindu sanctuary was formed during the Angkor period in the late 9th century AD by King Yosawarman after he transferred from Harihalalaya city, present-day Ruluh, to the area nearby modern-day Bakhang Mountain. The new city was named Yosatobore after King Yosatobormen and it used the Bakhang Mountain as the center point for this one sprawling urban area. On the other hand, based on archaeological traces, watermarks, and soil residues from dams, researchers pointed out that Yosato Bora city has an approximate area of 5 kilometers on each of its four sides, making it bigger than the Ongotom city. Historically, it was said that His Majesty had constructed a mountain temple at Mount Gunda, or Mount Yosato, after he had inaugurated the Lolei Temple. Presently, Mount Yosato or Mount Gandar is commonly referred to as Bakhang Mountain. And nevertheless, this Hindu mountain temple is also a dedication to Lord Shiva in the form of the holy Shiva Lingam that goes by the name Yosau Tereswara. However, this temple has one distinct yet special feature. Unlike other temples, the mountain surface was directly carved to form the five elevating tiers of the Bakhang Temple. Then, larger sandstones were attached and covered to form the external skin of the elevating tiers. For King Yosawarman, His Majesty also preferred other mountain temples as well, such as Mount Bok and Mount Grau, which exist in the flatland region of Simriam. Likewise, His Majesty also erect temples on each of the mountains to demonstrate his dedication to other deities namely Lord Shiva, Lord Narayana, and Lord Brahma of Hindu religion. Phnom Bakhang Temple consists of numerous towers on each of the five tiers. If we set aside the middle tower for a moment, the other 108 towers could have a superstitious relation with the universe, whereas the number 108 itself could have been related to one of the deity's name in Hinduism. Throughout Khmer history, it is certainly illustrated that civilization has shifted from Yosau Thobora city to elsewhere, especially during the 16th to 17th century of King Angjan's period 
where Theravada Buddhism was blossoming significantly. Although brick sanctuaries were not frequently seen as much when compared to the Angkor period, it is evident that Hindu inspiration still continues. Other regions besides Yusato Borat city also incorporated layers of tears to wooden temples and were motivated to use Hindu sanctuaries as a geographical foundation as well. After the religious shift, certain regional temples are transformed into Buddhist shrines. Therefore, Phnom Bakhang temple had additional Buddha statues installed, similar to other temples as well. For instance, on the highest tier, there is a giant-sized Buddha statue sitting in a lotus position that covers the entire mid-tower and certain parts of the four primary direction towers. In 1922, because the Buddha statue underwent severe fragmentation, researchers at the time got rid of the rest of the statue in order to examine the original form of the Bakang temple. Nevertheless, today we can still see the Buddha statues. Some were carefully kept in the southeast tower, and others are located along the eastern entrance. Ever since 2004, the World Monument Fund and Apsara Authority have addressed the necessary issues and implemented restoration projects. Simultaneously, both of these entities also designed long-term initiatives that are composed of tourist organizations and strengthening the temple infrastructure. Finally, there are also projects concentrating on archaeological studies and research on surrounding buildings around the temple sites as well. <laughs>